on rooms and resources. So you've added rooms and resources to your church and you want to be or to your organization and you want to be able to book those things for your event. OK, the first thing you should do is come over here. And if you know exactly what you want to book, let's say I want to book the gym. I just start typing and then I can book the gym. What you'll see here is it says two conflicts. That means if I'm if I want to book the gym that I've got to conflict, I've got to compete with another event that's also trying to book the gym. If you've marked somebody as a conflict resolver on your people page, they'll get a request saying, hey, Evan and this other person are both requesting the gym at the same time, who wins? So what this does is you should typically try to avoid conflicts if possible, but if you are like, nope, I am getting the gym, you just book this and then let the conflict resolver play out. But what this does is it gives you a heads up. It says, hey, this thing is in conflict, maybe you shouldn't book it. We're gonna book it anyway for the sake of this example. All right, so now I've booked the gym, right? And now I can put resources inside of the gym. So you'll see up here it says search for a room. If I were to add another room by clicking the browse tab, going to my Atlanta campus, and I wanna book the green room. Now you'll see I've got two rooms here and I can put resources inside of them. So I wanna have some trash cans in my gym. And it's gonna think about it for a second. Well, we're doing this live, so we're not going to wait. There we go. Rolling trash cans. I can say how many of those I need. It's going to show me the maximum quantity there. I can't book more than 10, so let's just say I'll book five. And you'll see these handy little drop downs next to each one of these things. This is where you can fill out additional information about whatever you're looking for. So you hit the drop down here. It's going to show you, hey, you created a conflict with this gym. These are the other things that are trying to use the gym at the same time. So maybe you can get some more information about whether you should create the conflict or not. You can also go over to notes and add anything here about the gym that you want the approver to be able to see. So when you request the gym, any notes you add here are gonna to go to that approver. Questions right here, there's no questions for the gym, but if there were, you would answer them here. And then any of your answers to those questions would go to the approver of the resource and they would help them make a decision or have a conversation with you about what to use. Room setups here, oh, I picked the wrong gym. Let me do this differently. I'm gonna go and pick the other gym. All right, here we go. So here's a bunch of questions that you would answer. I was wondering why the questions weren't there. Here's a bunch of questions that you would answer that go to the approver. And then if you go to setup over here, you can select any of the room setups that you've created for your gym right here. So let's say I wanna do a divided gym. It's gonna suggest, hey, these are the resources that are typically used when somebody uses a divided gym. This is what it should look like. Here's the description. And you can either choose to add or not, but I'm gonna to choose to add both of these things. And now you'll see that the round tables and the folding chairs are inside of the gym. You'll also see that there's action required here. That's because there are required questions that I have to answer before I'm allowed to book this thing. Again, this is just practice, so I'm gonna remove that, but typically you would answer that. Okay, so now once you've got your event set up, oh, let me talk about resources not in a room real quick. If there are things that you just need for your event that are gonna move between rooms, or maybe you don't belong inside of a room, maybe they're just out on the front lawn or something, you can just book them right here. That's what resources not in a room means. Some people are confused by that terminology. If you can think of something better to call it, please let me know. Uh, but that's the one that made the most sense to me. Okay, so that's that. When you have everything here set up, all your schedule times and your rooms and resources, you go down here and you save changes, and it's going to give you a recap of everything you just did. Now right now, we're just setting up this event, so it's just everything's green. Everything is you added a whole bunch of stuff. If I was to edit this event, it would show me what has changed. So let me do that real quick. I'm going to create this event. And now all these changes are saved. And when I click that button, that's when it fires off the requests to the approvers. Now they're gonna get an email that says, Evan's trying to use the gym, can he or not? But let's say I don't actually wanna use the gym. I don't actually need it anymore. So I'm gonna edit this event. I'm gonna edit this and future, so all the events. And I'm just gonna get rid of the gym. I don't wanna create a conflict. I'm a pacifist, I'm a peacemaker. I'll find some other way to do it. I'm gonna save changes. And you'll see it's going to recap the changes that were made in my session right here. It's going to say, hey, we're not booking the gym or the trash cans anymore. We're just keeping the green room as our only room. Yes, make these changes. Now, this has already fired off the email to the requesters, but now it won't show up when they log into calendar. They'll say, well, there's no, no problem. Evan said no. He's not going to use the gym.